física, bioquímica, de que esta coloración se debe a los carotenoides que están presentes en estas frutas vegetales y plantas. But what we must not forget is that carotenoids are also microbial pigments. They're colored pigments in many bacteria, archaea, and fungi of different kinds, and also in unicellular algae. And, um, okay. eh, lo, los carotenoides también se encuentran presentes en eh, pigmentos eh, microbianos, por ejemplo, en, en bacterias eh, ar y arqueas y en, en, en varios tipos de, de, de hongos, en eh, algas unicelulares como la... la Yeah. Como por ejemplo el, 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 beta, el, el betacaroteno. Y esto, esto es, eh, esto que, que estamos viendo en esta imagen es eh, eh, en Australia. This, this, this is Australia. Sí, esto es Australia. Pero es también producido en otros países. Pero se crece en such high salt concentrations. Yeah. Sí, los carotenoides no solamente se encuentran presentes en las eh, frutas eh, vegetales y, y, y flores, tal como se ha mencionado an anteriormente, sino que también se encuentran presentes en, eh, a, eh, en los pigmentos que encontramos presentes en animales, tal, eh, eh, por ejemplo, en, en alimentos muy populares como lo son lo, 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 los huevos, el, el pescado, eh, los crustáceos. Están eh, eh, presentes a lo largo del, del, del reino animal y lo encontramos como eh, presentes también en aves e invertebrados. Y tenemos una gran eh, diversidad de, 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 de carotenoides presentes en, estas, eh, en estos ani eh, animales que son los responsables de la coloración que tienen. Pero estos eh, animales no biosintetizan estos carotenoides. Estos carotenoides son obtenidos a través de la ingesta de los eh, alimentos que eh, ellos eh, toman.
toman de, de la naturaleza. So the, the eggs only have a yellow yolk if the chickens are fed carotenoids at the time that they're laying the eggs. If not, the egg yolk can be almost white. Yeah. Eh, and nobody eh, eats it. Yeah. Entonces, eh, vemos, vemos aquí eh, que la, eh, la clara, la yema, y, 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 y vemos que la yema... So the, the, these are just a few examples yeah. that they've been fried. Going through. Eh, eh, we y can go through quickly. Diferentes, diferentes ejemplos de eh, peces que tienen diferentes coloraciones y estas coloraciones se deben a la presencia de los carotenoides eh, que ellos obtienen de los organismos que ellos consumen que a su vez han ingerido, eh, por ejemplo. Eh, plantas o algas o, o alguna otra eh, or, organismo que contiene eh, carotenoides. Yes, these are also in birds in colored feathers. The flamingos are pink, but only if they're eating the right kind of crustaceans. <laughs> eh, eh, if, if they don't have the right food, then they, then they stay white. <laughs> Entonces nosotros vemos como por ejemplo en, en, en los flamingos, que como, como vemos en esta foto, estos flamingos red color. Can we go back one? Yeah. We only see the red color when these crustaceans are cooked. In the live animals, it's more a blue or green color. It's the same carotenoid, but in the live, in the live form, it is present in complex with protein, which is denatured by cooking. And that's what reveals the color of the carotenoid itself. Yeah. Nosotros eh, tenemos la, pre, la, la presencia, por ejemplo, de al, algas, yeah. crustáceos, que ellos, eh, cuando los vemos, tienen eh, por naturaleza esta coloración verdosa o azulada que nosotros observamos en la parte superior de la, de la diapositiva. No obstante, cuando estos... Eh,
of, for example, crabs. And I think the next one is C. anemonesia. These are all carotenoid colors. So many animals in the sea Because with, uh, with giving the talk in two different voices, <laughs> in two different languages, it will take much longer than, yeah. than we'd planned for. Um, and a lot of time has already gone. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't even mentioned human health, oh which pe some people are waiting for. Oh so I'm going to cut some of this out. Um, this is just another, another example of the occurrence of carotenoids in animals. Yeah. In an insect. Otro ejemplo de, 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 de el color de los de, de insectos animales. Y los helados también. Yeah. Ah, ice cream. I need this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the next one. La, la yeah. So, carotenoids. These are all examples of the occurrence of carotenoid. But um, something like 700 or more individual different carotenoid structures have now been discovered and elucidated. Eh, los carotenoides, existen más de 700 tipos de carotenoides eh, identificados en la, en la naturaleza. And in, in our food, each one of us will probably be eating about 100 different carotenoid molecules. Yeah. Eh, en, en los alimentos que consumimos, estamos ingiriendo aproximadamente más de 100 tipos diferentes de carotenoides. And if, if, we, if we capture some of you on the way out of this lecture room this evening and analyze your blood, then in all cases we'll find about 20 different carotenoids which are derived from the food that you've been eating. Si, no, si nosotros tuviésemos la, la posibilidad la, y, y, y la fortuna de poder extraer de cada uno de ustedes la sangre para hacer un, un, un análisis bioquímico, observaríamos que aproximadamente eh, eh, 20 carotenoides eh, se encuentran presentes Eh, tanto en la sangre, Obvio, hombre, dice tejido, pero para eso habría que hacerle algún tipo de disección a ustedes. Y esto, <laughs> entonces ahí también. La, 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 los principales eh, carotenoides presentes en, en, en las frutas, y el, eh, perdón, en los organismos, en los organismos vivos, en sus, en sus tejidos y, y sangre, son principalmente el betacaroteno, la luteína y el licopeno. Eh, encontramos también en menor cantidad otros tipos de, de carotenoides como lo son el afacaroteno, la seasantina y la betacriptosantina. Yeah. Yeah. Aquí estamos viendo la estructura de los diferentes carotenoides mencionados. Yeah.
El, el caso de la luteína, observamos que la luteína contiene grupos hidroxilos y estos grupos hidroxilos le, le proporcionan entonces esa carotenoide un mayor grado de eh, polaridad. En el caso del de el, el betacaroteno y el licopeno, entonces son sustancias eh, hidrofóbicas. Okay. Yes. In, in our typical diet, then we eat fruit and vegetables which contain carotenoids, eggs, dairy products, seafood, also manufactured foods, there may be carotenoids present. So all of these will give us some, uh, some carotenoid. Okay. Eh, eh, into our body. Okay. En los diferentes alimentos que ingerimos en, en la dieta, tales como frutas y vegetales, huevos y productos lácteos, productos marinos, <laughs> alimentos manufacturados, suplementos, eh, wow. <laughs> Tenemos ingesta de diferentes tipos de carotenoides presentes en, en estos alimentos. La ingesta diaria aproximadamente de todos estos carotenoides eh, por el ser humano es aproximadamente entre 5 a 20 miligramos. These chairs have appeared. <laughs> <laughs> if that is, if you want to sit. It would be too dangerous to sit because my, I, 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 I'm still operating on a European biorhythm. <laughs> So my body thinks it's well after midnight already. <laughs> if, I, if I sit down, then I'll, I'll, I'll never Dice wake que, up again. Hay un riesgo en sentarse porque su cuerpo todavía está sincronizado con el tiempo horario de Europa y que si se sienta, lo más probable es que se quede dormido. In our blood, and again, when we, when we extract blood from some of you, that we will do on the way out. Um, the, the, the normal level of carotenoid in the blood is only a microgram or so per milliliter of blood. The concentration is not very high. But there's also a very wide variation between individuals. Some people can absorb and accumulate much higher concentrations of carotenoids than other people can. There's a, there's a big variation. But generally speaking, if your diet has a lot of carotenoid, you will have a higher carotenoid content in the blood. And therefore, you will be considered to be at lower risk of many diseases, degenerative diseases especially. Yeah. El, el contenido, de, si, si nosotros tuviésemos la, la dicha de tomar eh, algunas muestras de sangre eh, de ustedes, y hiciéramos eh, el, el, el análisis eh, químico del contenido de carotenoides eh, presentes en, 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 en la sangre de, de cada uno de ustedes, observaríamos que en niveles normales de aproximadamente, que, que oscilan aproximadamente entre 0.5 y un microgramo por mililitro. Esta, esta cantidad, no obstante, eh, 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 varía en función de los, eh, de, de los individuos, eh, cada uno podría tener un mayor o, 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 menor, o menor contenido de carotenoides presentes en sangre, aunque consumiera el mismo tipo de, 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 de alimento. Y eso tiene una super explicación bioquímica. Eso está relacionado a los procesos bioquímicos asociados a nuestro organismo por, lo, por el cual nosotros metabolizamos estos tipos, estos tipos de, de, de compuestos. La presencia de altos contenidos de carotenoides en nuestros eh, flujo sanguíneo es un alto indicativo de que eh, tenemos un, eh, un, una, un mayor beneficio en la salud producto de la presencia de, de, de estos carotenoides y es un indicativo de que estamos consumiendo una dieta rica en frutas y vegetales ricos en carotenoides. So this is one of the questions that people often ask. They will say, a high level of carotenoid in the blood decreases the risk of diseases. Is this the carotenoid which is having this effect? Or is the fact that you have a high level of carotenoid simply an indication that you normally have a healthy diet? Yeah. Eh, And it's eh, very difficult to distinguish between these. Yeah. Eh, eh, una, una de las cosas a ver, eh, a, a tomar en cuenta cuando ingerimos Alto, o sea, cuando observamos en la sangre una, un alto contenido de carotenoides.
microorganismos vivos en, en, en nosotros, eh, altos contenidos que podemos detectar, altos contenidos carotenoides en, en, en la sangre. Entonces, podremos decir, podríamos decir que, bueno, que esa alta, alta eh, ingesta de, de carotenoides que lleva a una alta eh, presencia de los mismos en, en tejidos y plasma sanguíneo, eh, se, 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 tra, se, se traduce en los beneficios que en materia de salud observ, observamos. Pero ciertamente esto no está totalmente comprobado en que en los seres humanos esto sea así. Es decir, que haya una real asociación entre la, la disminución de, de, de daño o, o de enfermedades por la presencia de los carotenoides. So, carotenoids and health. We need to ask questions about this. What are the claims that people make that carotenoids, about carotenoids being beneficial for human health? People claim many things. We need to be able to answer the question of what they really do, not simply what they are claimed to do. And are there any newer ideas now which are worth investigating and taking us in different directions? Yeah. En relación a los carotenoides en la, la, la salud, hay muchas cosas que se adjudican o se, o se indican en, en relación al, al potencial, en relación a la salud que tienen los carotenoides. Pero, ¿qué es lo que realmente eh, se indican que estos carotenoides eh, hacen en beneficio de la salud? ¿Qué es lo que realmente estos carotenoides que ingerimos en los alimentos están realizando en relación a nuestra salud? Eh, son temas que eh, eh, son de, de, de interés eh, de, para investigar. ¿Y qué eh, relación hay en, 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 en términos de nuevas eh, ideas eh, eh, relacionadas con la ingesta de carotenoides y su efecto en la salud? ¿Sí? ¿Qué vale la pena eh, llevar a un proceso de investigación científica. The kind of claims that people make are that some carotenoids are precursors of vitamin A and are the main form in which we obtain our vitamin A. There are also there's a lot of publicity But in order to understand what the carotenoids are really doing, then we need to understand more about their chemistry. And this is the part which really scares biologists. They don't want to know the details of chemistry. But when we look at the carotenoid structure, it is a hydrocarbon. This tells us about its solubility or lack of solubility in water. It has a conjugated double bond system, which is responsible for its color, but also responsible for its reactivity. And it's the reactivity of these molecules and the shape of the molecules, which are or can be very important or essential to any biological action. Eh, las, las características bioquímicas y el efecto beneficioso para la, 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 la salud 
eh, está asociado ciertamente con las propiedades químicas y físicas que tienen los, los carotenoides, algo que muchas veces desafortunadamente eh, asusta a los biólogos cuando, cuando tiene que verse eh, en este, eh, a, a estudiar estos temas estructurales y fisicoquímicos asociados a, a, la, a, la, a las moléculas vivas. Eh, eh, sin embargo, volviendo al tema de los carotenoides, la estructura química de una molécula que se, que, que se encuentra presente en el ser vivo o que se ingiere en, en los alimentos, explica diferentes tipos de propiedades que van a tener efecto a nivel de la salud, como por ejemplo son su solubilidad en medio acuoso. Y... I think you're a few slides ahead of me. <laughs> now, now it's time for me, and especially for Armando, to teach you all, especially the students, to teach you carotenoid chemistry. <laughs> Here are some examples of carotenoid structures. So we'll give you a few seconds to learn all of these. <laughs> Eh, es que en relación a su estructura química, pues son prácticamente todo lo mismo. Sin embargo, son todos diferentes. The next one. Yeah. In what way are they all the same? Well, they are, they are all insoluble in water. They all have
características que nos permiten hablar de que los carotenoides son todos iguales, son insolubles en agua, eh, están caracterizados por tener en su estructura química una larga cantidad de enlaces, eh, doble, doble enlace conjugados, eh, tienen la capacidad por, por esa estructura química de absorción de luz eh, en la región visible, eh, son eh, muchas veces moléculas lineales rígidas que tienen isomerización, pero una de las características importantes que tienen que ver con los efectos de los mismos en materia de salud es estar relacionado a la agregación que, que, que tienen estos carotenoides cuando los mismos se encuentran en medio acuoso. Y también otra, otro de los eh, factores a tener en cuenta eh, en relación a la similitud de los diferentes tipos de carotenoides es que eh, eh, su, la cantidad que, um, that are, que son ricos en, en, en electrones y, y esto los lleva a que sean eh, más eh, reactivos. Yeah. Okay. The next one. Next one. Eh, la, la próxima. Solubility is important. They're not, they're not soluble in water, so naturally they will occur only, exist only in a hydrophobic environment, such as a fat o membrane. Eh, eh, son, eh, los carotenoides son eh, eh, estructuras que se caracterizan, en términos de su, a su solubilidad, eh, eh, se caracterizan por ser insolubles en agua y ellos eh, usualmente se eh, disuelven en medios eh, hidrofóbicos, ambientes eh, eh, celulares eh, hidrofóbicos como por ejemplo las eh, membranas celulares, estructuras eh, eh, grasas, como por ejemplo eh, células de, adi de adipositos. ¿no? Yeah. The next. Next one. We'll, we'll move on from ah, this. Okay. Time, time okay. is. Okay. It, it takes more than yeah, twice as long for two people. Aquí, uh, yeah, but I can mention it uh, very quickly. Remember okay. that we okay. studied it already. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aquí vemos características que tienen los, eh, los carotenoides. Recuerden que, la, que muchos de, 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 de los carotenoides tienen e, e, estructuras trans y otros tienen estructuras, puede, pueden tener ciertas, ciertas eh, partes de, de la molécula que, que, que tienen eh, regiones cis. Eh, esto lleva a que los procesos eh, en, en materia de salud que vemos a partir de los carotenoides están también asociados al eh, el tipo de isomerización, de isómeros de estos carotenoides que nosotros estamos ingiriendo en la, en la dieta. Siguiente. This just illustrates the different shapes of some of these isomers. Esto es solamente para ilustrar los dif las diferentes formas que pueden adquirir los carotenoides en función a la, la si son eh, eh, regiones cis o, 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 o trans. Yeah. El siguiente. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now we say that they're all different. And it's really the functional groups, the oxygen groups. Los carotenoides se caracterizan por, por tener eh, presencia de diferentes grupos funcionales, eh, 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 especialmente a, a, a hacia los, eh, los extremos de, de, de los mismos, los cuales le confieren diferentes tipos de, de conformación. Eh, ya enseñamos mucho en bioquímica lo de conformación, así que estamos claros en, a lo que nos referimos con conformación. ¿no? Entonces... Eh, esto lleva, esta, estas formas que tienen, que asumen los carotenoides debido a la estructura química, son los que eh, conllevan a que, a que ellos eh, se formen parte de diferentes estructuras biológicas, es decir, diferentes células, diferentes organelos, etc. Y esto va a explicar también las diferentes interacciones que ellos tienen con diferentes proteínas, como por ejemplo enzimas o diferentes tipos de dianas, eh, que son 
eh, eh, usualmente proteínas. Y eh, también ellos van a influir en la eh, ori eh, conformación, orientación que tengan eh, las membranas eh, biológicas. Okay, next one. If the car different carotenoids affect a membrane structure, then they may be able to affect the properties of de señalización eh, metabólicas. Eh, estos pueden formar, estos carotenoides eh, pueden tener diferentes efectos, obviamente si se encuentran como monómeros o como agregados. Más adelante vamos a ver que cuando se encuentran como agregados tiene mucho menos beneficio para la salud que cuando se encuentran como monómeros. Y también en función a su eh, iso, eh, eh, forma isomérica, eh, entonces es, eh, esto va a llevar a diferentes eh, eh, formas que tengan estas moléculas, lo cual va a, a tener diferentes tipos de efectos en materia de salud. Okay. This is just an example of three different carotenoids. The one nearest to me is the way that the carotenoid lycopene sits within a membrane swimming around in the lipid part. The next one is beta carotene, also swimming around in the lipid part, but in a rather different orientation. Whereas at the far end, carotenoids with oxygen functions in each end group actually span across the membrane and may be anchored at both sides of the membrane. Eh, aquí eh, vemos eh, diferentes tipos de carotenoides que se encuentran en las, en las membranas eh, bio eh, biológicas. techniques, especially something like linear dichroism, will tell us about the orientations. Yeah. Eh, para los que co conocen un poco de, acerca de la química y los diferentes eh, metodologías que se, que, que, que se, de análisis químico, muchos de estos eh, eh, de características de los carotenoides en las membranas, etcétera, se han estu estudiado utilizando diferentes técnicas químicas, como por ejemplo el licorismo circular. Now this, this is a particularly important point when thinking about biological activity of carotenoids. 
that... Um, no, 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 one back. Yeah. In a polar environment, such as a water environment, as we find in many living tissues, the carotenoid molecules will tend to aggregate, form aggregates and even crystals. And this may be significant for biological activity because it can change the properties of the carotenoid car uh, molecules very considerably, depending sí. on whether they're single molecules or aggregates. Yeah. Una de las características importantes cuando pensamos en, en, en relación a los carotenoides y su efecto eh, en relación a la salud, si, eh, está vinculado a que eh, si ellos, cuando se encuentran en medio acuoso, tienen a formar agregados, es decir, tienden a, a, a unirse, a, a acumularse y formar estructuras cristalinas o si ellos se encuentran de manera independiente eh, en el medio celular. Obviamente, si ellos se encuentran formando estructuras cristalinas, es decir, formando agregados, ellos van a disminuir ostensiblemente su eh, actividad biológica, eh, es decir, van a ser entonces menos beneficiosas para la salud que si se encuentran en forma de monómeros libres. Okay. Next one. Yeah. <clears throat> you can easily see the difference between carotenoid aggregates and uh, single monomeric forms by the difference in color. The monomeric solutions are usually yellowish to orange in color, whereas the aggregates and crystals may be red. Es, es bastante eh, sencillo, en el caso de los carotenoides, que lo, no, no, no lo podemos hacer con muchos otros compuestos que se estudian en el tema de productos, en el área de productos naturales, el, el, el poder diferenciar si carotenoides se encuentra en forma de agregados o monómeros libres. Eh, eh, esto se debe, esta diferenciación que se puede hacer, se, se debe a que si el carotenoide se encuentra en forma monomérica, contiene usualmente una coloración amarillo o, 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 o anaranjado, en tanto que cuando ellos se encuentran eh, eh, agregados, nosotros vamos a observar, es decir, formando cristales, ellos van a tender a formar, a, a tener una coloración rojiza. Next. This is a very simple illustration of this. The same carotenoid, if it dissolves in oil or organic solvent floating on top of water, then it's yellow in color. This is the color of the carotenoid in proper solution. Whereas the aggregates, particles, crystals stay in a water medium, remain red. And th this is one of the good things about working with carotenoids, that they are so strongly colored that this is an indication to us that something like this may be happening. Okay. Aquí, en, en, en esta figura, nosotros eh, observamos eh, claramente una diferenciación eh, en relación a los carotenoides cuando se encuentran en forma eh, monomérica o si se encuentran en forma cristalizada. Por ejemplo, si nosotros observamos la parte de arriba en donde en, en tenemos eh, una, un, un, un solvente de características hidrofóbicas como puede ser una, un aceite, el carotenoide se encuentra eh, libre en, for, eh, en forma monomérica en, y, y, por, y tiene esa coloración amarilla. Cuando se encuentra entonces en el medio acuoso, ellas tienen a formar a, a, a agregados, a unirse. Entonces, tienen a formar cristales que toman una coloración rojiza. Esto nos da un indicativo de, eh, que, de cómo estos carotenoides, cuando se encuentran en el cuerpo humano, pueden tener efectos a, en, en, en la salud. Vamos a ver más adelante eh, esto, eh, cómo se da. Now, Um, this, this is the kind of aggregation that we see with carotenoids, the molecules stacked together, like being more or less linear molecules, they stack together in this way. And the chemistry of these aggregates may be quite different from the known chemistry of carotenoids in solution. And it's more, it's more the chemistry of forms like this, which may be relevant to um, biological activity. Eh, aquí tenemos como eh, ejemplo eh, el, el, el licopeno y tenemos aquí licopeno que se, que, que se unen cada uno de ellos para formar eh, a, a agregados. Estos eh, agregados obviamente van a tener una función 
eh, bioquímica di, 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 diferente a cuando se encuentran en forma libre. Recordemos siempre, siempre mantengamos esto en mente, que las características bioquímicas, la fusión, la actividad que estos componentes van a tener en el organismo vivo y, y muchas otras moléculas que, que, que se encuentran en el organismo vivo, Depende de la estructura, la conformación y la configuración de las mismas. Entonces, si ellos se encuentran de, de, de esta manera agregados, ciertamente van a tener un, eh, una actividad diferente a la que nosotros podemos ver cuando ellos se encuentran en forma libre. Now, um, doing the talk in this way takes a lot longer. If I had given the whole talk, as initially planned, I would have been finished in about 40 minutes. It, it takes two or three times as long to do it this way with the translation. So what, what I plan to do now is just for a few minutes to go through very quickly a series of slides. I may stop on occasional slides and point out something in particular on these slides. But also, um, if anyone is interested in any of these aspects that I just gloss over, then I'm very happy to elaborate on this with people at any time in the next couple of days or so. But, eh, but yeah, you, the audience is getting very tired. Armando is getting very tired. I'm, al <laughs> I'm already asleep. <laughs> Miren, eh, ahora mismo estamos en, en un tema, eh, por el tema de la traducción, esto hace que el proceso se dé un, un poquito más, la, más, más largo. Entonces, eh, la pregunta es, ¿habría a, algún problema eh, en que el doctor Britton pudiese, para que vayamos mucho más rápido, eh, dar su presentación en, en, en el idioma de Shakespeare? ¿Ya? Ok, bien. No, no problem, sir. So go ahead. Okay. Oh, so I can take a rest. <laughs> oh my God. Take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do I do I have to sit down as well now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, just just to, to, to finish off and, and particularly the last two or three slides are the ones which are really aimed at the students. Um, the aggregation of the carotenoids may have many consequences, may have conditions uh, in conditions in living tissues. The aggregation is strongly favored. The monomer concentration, even in good solvents, is quite low. So aggregation is a serious problem. And the properties and behavior of the aggregated carotenoids may be quite different from the chemistry that we think we understand. The next one, please. Siguiente. Yeah. The solubility, the fact that they aggregate, is relevant to bioavailability. We can eat as much carotenoid as we can get. Um, absorption and transport mechanisms within the blood on the blood lipoproteins really transport only individual monomeric carotenoids, not aggregates. Membrane structure and properties may be different in the two forms. If you're doing work with cell cultures, which is, I know, of interest to Amanda and other people, then as soon as you add a carotenoid to cell cultures, then it will form aggregates. And it will not be able to, to work in the same way as a monomeric carotenoid. So you're dealing with something which is not physiological anymore. And the hook, take the, all of these things together, the aggregation or not may have a very severe effect on biological activity. 
They have bioavailability, carotenoids. They're fat soluble. We need to have fat or oil in our diet to dissolve the carotenoid in order for it to be absorbed by the body, transported around the body to reach the tissues where it may be active. But this does occur and the carotenoids are, for, are found in many different tissues. And we also all have an enzyme or maybe two enzymes in our intestine which will cleave carotene into vitamin A. And that's the main form of vitamin A that we get. Next one. Yeah. The aggregation, you can actually see this in action. If you think of carrots and also red palm oil, the carotenoid composition and concentration is very similar in these two. But the carrots look very red whereas the palm oil looks much more yellow. That is because in the carrot root, the carotenoid is present as crystals or aggregates. And in the palm oil, <clears throat> it's actually dissolved in the oil. So the bioavailability of the carotene from palm oil will be much greater than the bioavailability from carrots. Next one. So in order for the carotenoids to get into our body, they must be released from the food that we eat. The food must be disrupted. And depending on how easily we can disrupt the food structure, then this definitely affects the bioavailability. And also the physical form of the carotenoid in this food structure does affect things. Cooking and processing. We, we're rather brought up to think that cooking is bad because it destroys valuable substances. It destroys vitamins and so on. In the case of carotenoids, it actually in, improves the bioavailability because it softens the tissue. The bioavailability from cooked carrot is much greater than that from raw carrot, for example. Remember the pronunciation, tomato, tomato fruit, tomato juice, very red, about the red color of these seeds. Tomato soup is much more orange in color because in the fruit, the, the, the lycopene present, the carotenoid present is crystalline and aggregated and is not very highly bioavailable. If you eat tomato soup, then the, this structure has been dis disrupted and therefore the bioavailability is much better. Next one. And this is particularly a problem with things like carrots and tomatoes because the carotenoid is not only present as aggregates, but the carotenoid is present as crystals. And it's quite difficult to dissolve crystals even in solvents which are good solvents of the carotenoid. The crystal structures are difficult to break down. And the next two slides, I think. Next one. ¿De la siguiente? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. ¿De next, la next one. Yeah. The, the, this is a microscopic picture of carrot cells. And the red blobs are actually carotene crystals within the raw carrot. And it is very difficult for these to be taken into the body. So bioavailability is very small. The next one shows lycopene crystals within the tomato. And again, these are very difficult or impossible to dissolve in fat and therefore to be absorbed. This, this really says much the same thing, so we move on again. Yeah. yeah, I just want to flick through. I'm not going to dwell on this one, but th there are interactions with proteins which can have a profound effect on the carotenoid chemistry. The next one, please. These different solutions are all the same carotenoid 
astaxanthin but with different kinds of protein complexes. These are all, all natural. These are all naturally occurring forms of protein complexes. And because it's affecting the color, then it's affecting various other properties as well. This is our friend, the lobster, one of my favorite projects of all time. The, the one on the far side does not look happy. It's red. It's not smiling. It's dead. Because it's been cooked and liberated the free carotenoid color. The one on this side looks much happier. This is a more natural color, the blue color. And that's because of the protein complex where there's a kind of capsule in which the carotenoid molecules are trapped. And interact specifically with the protein. This, this in itself is not particularly relevant to human health, but it's just a nice um, uh, curious observation. In, in birds, in this goldfinch, the yellow feathers and the red feathers are both, both contain the same carotenoid but it's different interaction with the protein structure of the feather, which gives rise to the two different colors, yellow and red. So protein interactions can have a big effect, not only in these animals where we can see the color changes, but could also have quite a big effect on the properties of carotenoid in terms of human health. So carotenoids and human health, we really have to look at the claims that are made and think that many of these claims that are made do not take into account what the properties of the carotenoid may be in the system that's being studied. And, and that's why I say we don't really know whether what's being claimed is true or not. Because if people take the chemistry into account at all, it's simply the known chemistry of carotenoids in organic solution, which, is, which everybody knows and has known for many years. And the chemistry of the carotenoids as they may be acting within biological systems, within human cells, may be quite different. The health claims, precursors of vitamin A, it is well known, has been well known for many years, that most of us get our vitamin A in the form of carotenoids, which are cleaved in the intestine into vitamin A. And this process is controlled so that we don't produce excess amounts of vitamin A. If we eat large amounts of vitamin A itself, this is very toxic. In some ways, vitamin A is more toxic than cyanide and will destroy the liver and will kill people. And there are examples of polar explorers eating polar bear liver, which is very high vitamin A content, and becoming very ill or even dying because of vitamin A poisoning. But we, we get most of our, our vitamin A from carotenes in the intestine. This is controlled. So only the amount is made which is needed. So overdosing like that is not a problem. Um, yeah, most of it. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 this simply says that we, the, we, we know something of the chemistry of carotenoids in solution, but we don't really know what the chemistry, what the properties may be in the living systems because they may function as specific protein complexes in some cases. What we do need to be sure of is that any health effects that, we, that are reported, the health effects are consistent 
with the properties of the carotenoids in vivo. The next one, yeah. Provitamin A, yeah, this is what I've already said. Move on, move on. And again. Vitamin A is essential for vision. It's essential for the visual pigments in our eyes. But also retinoic acid, vitamin A acid, is a very important signaling molecule in the body, involved in many in regulating many processes. Age-related macular degeneration becomes much more important to you as you reach my age because it's the main, it's the main cause of blindness in elderly people. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of blindness which reduces the resolution so that you cannot see things clearly. And it affects central vision. So the person who suffers from this only has peripheral vision. They can see sideways, but not see what's in front of them. The next one. The, the macular lutea is a small yellow spot in the back of the retina, which has a high concentration of carotenoid. The next one. You can see the yellow spot, the macula, is marked on here, at this side. And that's the, the most sensitive part of the retina. And this is protected by carotenoid in there. This is well established. <clears throat> so this carotenoid, hydroxycarotenoid lutein, which is part of our normal diet, um, goes specifically into this part of the retina and therefore uh, is important in maintaining the health of our eyes and preventing macular degeneration. These are the kind of hydroxy compounds which are present in the macula. Uh, there is an unusual form of zeaxanthin, which is not part of our diet, which is present in the macula, but which is probably uh, formed from lutein slowly in the eye. And any attempt to give supplements to improve uh, the macular pigment levels and prevent macular degeneration. This is a very slow process. It can take weeks or months before you get any real reaction from this. Next one. This is the sort of thing that the macular pigment is said to do. Acting as a, pig as a filter, reducing haze, reducing glare, the effects of glare and dazzle, and too much light. Um, so it does have an effect on most people. Uh, nowadays, some people are worried that long-term exposure to the kind of blue light that you get from computer screens and so on may be affecting the macular pigment and therefore may be affecting, in the long term, the vision. I do want to mention this one because this, this is something which is quite new and may prove to be very important. And that is the carotenoid lutein, a normal component in our diet, can actually pass into the brain and is found in the brain. And higher levels of lutein in the brain are associated with maintaining the brain function in elderly people. So it tends to, it helps to prevent dementia occurring at too early a, a time. The tests that are done show better performance in elderly people who have more lutein, more macular pigment, than in those who have less. And I think this is an area which in the in the coming few years, is going to be found to be very important. <clears throat> if people are already becoming or showing signs of dementia, then increasing lutein does not prevent this or reverse it. 
but it does help to prevent it if it's given at an earlier stage. Also, in infants, lutein in breast milk or in infant formula milk can get into the brain of infants and seems to be associated with the proper development of the brain. So again, a new area, which I think is going to prove to be very interesting in the future. There's a lot of publicity now about carotenoids and their anti-cancer effects. What sort of evidence is there? Well, the evidence is perhaps not so great. Next one. The evidence. Epidemiology show, does show that people who have higher levels of carotenoid in the blood may have reduced risks of certain cancers. But this is not necessarily a direct effect of the carotenoid. It could just be in an indicator of a healthy diet. Clinical trials, when people are feed carotenoids and look for the onset of cancers and other coronary diseases and so on, there have been many trials like this which give conflicting results. Some show that it's a good thing some may show it's a bad thing. Some show no real effect. What is true? The truth really depends upon what people are feeding. It depends on the dose. The doses that are given in these trials are usually maybe up to 100 times greater than a normal dietary level. So it's not something which is normal physiological concentrations. It depends on the form that's given. Many of the forms given are crystals, which don't dissolve very well. So not, not, they won't get into the body very well. There are different kinds. And if there is any sign of oxidative breakdown of the carotenoid, the slightest exposure of the carotenoid to air will lead to the formation of peroxide which can have strong pro-oxidant effects, which are much stronger than the observed antioxidant effects may be. So if the, if the clinical trials are giving carotenoid samples which are not pure, then they may not be reliable because they may be producing something which has a harmful effect rather than a good effect. <coughs> Cells in culture, you can add carotenoids to cells in culture, and you can see effects on many cellular processes. But when you add the carotenoid to cells in culture, it's in a water medium, the carotenoid will immediately aggregate. If it's in air, then it will start to form peroxides, so you can get peroxidant pro effects. You can get breakdown products which may themselves have different actions. So again, cells in culture look very promising, but when you really think about it, there are problems with it, or there can be problems with it that we don't really understand. Um, you want to the next one? Is that video? Yeah. Coronary heart disease, the same as with cancer. Yeah. Is that video? Can you move on? Sure. No, 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 no. El, el, el de... so, okay, no. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, we okay. can move, move, move forward. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, 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 you've gone too far back now. Ah, okay. I, I think what, what, <coughs> what we really should be thinking about is that the... Um, the effects that are being reported are effects that people are seeing, but it, the problem may well rest with the interpretation because they're seeing effects, but the effects are maybe not being produced in the way that people think they're being produced. There are interesting suggestions that carotenoids may have some action on metabolism, particularly in mitochondria. Um, 
The evidence is not yet very strong, but I think it's an interesting area to explore. As are <coughs> possible effects on bone health, arthritis, even diabetes. There are some reports on those which are worth looking into, but we, we don't know yet what's really happening. Oh, never mind reactivity. Keep, keep going. Free, free radicals are associated with many degenerative diseases. And carotenoids are amongst the antioxidants which are considered may have some effect on these. But uh, it depends on how pure the samples are that are being given. Because antioxidant effects, pro-oxidant effects, difficult to control what you're dealing with. So, although there's a lot of publicity about antioxidant effects of carotenoids, I think we have to be very cautious, again, about what we're interpreting here. So, I think what we learn from this is that you can do experiments which give you what look interesting results. I, mean, I could design an experiment which gives you any result you want. And then tomorrow I could design you an experiment which gives you just the opposite result, um, just by slightly manipulating the systems. And there's, there's so much of this is happening. This is why I say we don't know what is true and what is not true, because we really don't understand enough about the details of what's happening in these systems. Some people take supplements. Depends what supplement you take. I don't take supplements. Um, maybe I should, but I don't. Um, but supplements are also usually given on much higher doses than you would get in a normal diet. Anyone who has a good, healthy diet doesn't really need supplements at all. Now, the last two or three slides, these last two or three slides are mainly intended for the sport, for the younger generation, that in this field, in the carotenoid field and human health, but also in any scientific field that you go into, evaluation is a problem. What you need to do is to read the primary literature. Don't rely on reviews, because people who write reviews often only look at the abstracts of the papers they're reviewing. And in the abstracts, the authors only put the information they want people to read. So you, you have to get into the habit of looking at the primary literature to evaluate the experimental design that people have been using, see if their experiments are done in a very um, rigorous way. Don't take too much notice of the author's interpretation of the results because the author will have done the work in order to prove some hypothesis that the author has in many cases. So you need to look at the results and draw your own conclusions, which may be quite different from the conclusions that many other people make. But that doesn't mean that you're wrong. So be prepared to do that. Always make sure that any conclusions you draw about any compounds, carotenoids or others, are consistent with the properties of the compounds you're working with in the conditions that you're studying. So you really need to know the properties as of molecules as they may be present in the cell rather than as they're present in a bottle of chemicals that you may get from somewhere. The next slide. This, this again is aimed for students mainly because there's a temptation amongst younger people to think that science is done with big boxes which are very expensive and produce lots of results. And so they do, but you need to know, understand what's happening in there. And this is the most important piece of equipment that you will ever have as a scientist, your brain. And the most important thing to do is your own power of thought, your own thinking and analysis of what you're reading. And the, the final slide, 
the final slide, isn't it, for anyone who wants to do science as a career, then it must be fun. But we, we, we have had a lot of fun over the years doing scientific work. If you enjoy it, then you'll do it much better. So treat science as fun, but also serious, serious fun and a way of life. But make sure that you use your brain and don't rely on other people's brains all of the time. Excellent. Right. Now, it, it's time. Oh, it's, it's two, it's two o'clock in the morning for me now. I just realized. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, bueno, eh, yo quiero eh, agradecer la, la presencia de las autoridades universitarias, el señor rector, el señor vicerrector, los señor, eh, el señor director de investigación, el señor de, decano, la, la señora... Eh, directora, eh, de cada uno de los profesores y sobre, sobre todo de cada uno de ustedes, los estudiantes. Y, y bueno, las autoridades de Senacit que estuvieron con nosotros el día de hoy. El doctor George Brito nos ha permitido ver algo que es cierto. Toda la química que nosotros estudiamos, que nosotros eh, entronizamos, hacemos nuestra, tiene un efecto y un valor en biología, farmacia, en medicina, en diferentes áreas de la ciencia. La bioquímica es una, es una ciencia fundamental e importante, porque todos nosotros somos entes químicos. Estamos formados estructuralmente, estructuralmente por sustancias químicas. Durante la expo bioquímica, nos vamos a dar cuenta, muchos, hablo de los, de, especialmente de los jóvenes, de la importancia, la relevancia que tiene la bioquímica en el mundo y de la que tendrá más adelante. I want to, to take the opportunity, sir, to, to say thank you very much for being here in Panama, for being part of this activity that we do with love for science and for our students. You contribute a lot to, to our work. Look, you was one of the person that farmed me. I look, <laughs> no, I am fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Un fuerte aplauso al padre de la bioquímica de los carotenores. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> que tengan muy buenas noches. Y que Dios los bendiga.